everyone. I'm Kelly Boyle with TVInsider.com and TV Guide Magazine. We are here at New York Comic Con with the showrunner and cast of Let the Right One In on Showtime. Hi, everybody. Hello. 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 Hi, hi. So, um, Andrew, to get started, I know the series was inspired both by the film and the book. Uh, what were some of the things you really wanted to focus on when bringing this story and these characters to life in a TV series? Yeah, great question. I wanted to first capture what was so exquisite about the film and the novel, which uh, is really the relationship between these two young individuals right here that uh, that Ian and Madison play. Um, in the original film, there's, a, there's just a beautiful relationship between a vampire and, and a bullied, isolated boy she befriends. Um, but there was also a much smaller relationship in the film that was about the caretaker of the vampire. And in our series, which is relocated to New York with a completely different set of characters. Uh, that caretaker is Eleanor's father, Mark here, by, uh, played by the fabulous Damien Bashir here. And so that was really interesting to me to look at the parent-child relationship with Mark and Eleanor, and then with Naomi and Isaiah. Um, I mentioned Isaiah, but his mother, Naomi, uh, is, a, is a homicide detective, which is bad news for our father and daughter duo right here. Right, exactly, and um, sorry, just a second, mm -hmm. awkward moment. Uh, so uh, Demian, Mark does kill for his daughter even though it's like in her nature now, so can you touch on the crisis of faith he's having over the things he does to keep his daughter safe? It is, it is a big burden, you know, to anyone who crosses a dark line to keep on uh, living with it. Uh, it is one of the uh, challenges that my character goes uh, through. And, um, and it also, it's also something that I loved about the uh, character, that uh, it makes him three-dimensional and uh, with so many different layers. And uh, once you cross certain lines, then it's very difficult to come back. But you would do that if that would save your children's um, soul and own faith and, um, and future and happiness and health and everything else. Yeah, parents would do that for, your, for their children. Right. And Anika, vampires exist in this world, and we know that her, uh, Naomi's son would easily believe in the supernatural because of his belief in magic, I think. Uh, but Naomi's a detective who searches for facts, right? Uh, how likely is she to believe in the supernatural, and how could we maybe see that evolve over the course of the season? That is an amazing question. Um, you know, she's not likely to believe in the supernatural. She's not big on magic, <laughs> even. Um, but she is fact-driven, and she is extremely intelligent. And at some point, the facts point you to a finite answer, and she has to find a way to take that in. Um, I think that's going to be really difficult for her, but it also would be a pivotal point in how she and her son are going to survive in this space. There's no way to survive in this space if you don't come to that truth at some point, right? Mm -hmm. um, so she really doesn't have a choice, but it will be an interesting journey uh, that she takes to get there. Yeah. And Madison, so I have to ask, it's a vampire show, drinking blood is involved. Yes. What did that taste like? What were you actually drinking? And uh, yeah, what was that like? Um, the, blood, the blood on set was um, actually crystal light, but I like to say the sugar ratio is like times 100. <laughs> um, so yeah, they would just fill that whole thing up. And when we had some, uh, just some, for example, some blood on my lip, it would be just corn syrup, mouth blood. But um, I think that definitely kept me up through the late nights. <laughs> yeah, I do the night shoots that you got to do, right? Uh, so, um, Ian, with Isaiah, uh, he faces some real hardship in the premiere, both at school and at home. And how much will we see him change throughout the season after these events? Isaiah changes a little bit when he sees that he has Eleanor on his side because he sees that he doesn't have to fret as much as he used to when he was alone. 
when he was alone, he had nobody. He was afraid to tell anybody because he thought that all the bullies would do something even worse to him. But now with Eleanor, he's he's not afraid to tell her because she knows that she that she can handle all of them. Yeah. And then for Ian and Madison, how will we see Eleanor and Isaiah's friendship evolve this season? <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> General things. Will they uh, get closer? Will they? Will she help him with his bullying issues? What's what's gonna some general things that's going to happen with that. They definitely do get closer. She helps him with all the bullies and everything. But he, but with Eleanor, Isaiah sees Eleanor as a person that he can turn to because he's never really had, like, a friend that that's able to just sit there and listen to him. So when he has Eleanor, it's kind of new to him, but... He loves the friendship that they have. Um, yeah, I agree with everything Ian has just said. Um, I also think this is a big turning point in Ellie's life, uh, just because for the past 10 years she's been on the run and she's only had her dad. Um, and she hasn't really had a real childhood since then. So I do think having Isaiah in her life definitely changes everything. Having someone to, you know, just have a friend um, she hasn't had that in 10 years, so I think that's what really changes in this. Yeah, and then quickly, uh, before we wrap up, so Anika and Demian, your characters are next-door neighbors. They're both uh, parents to young children, and Naomi suspects some things about Mark, and uh, we know that she is right, too. <laughs> so um, what can you tease about potential conflicts that we're going to see between these two parents this season? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of conflicts, and I think that one of the biggest things is when you see your child befriending someone who's actually good for them, and they're good for each other, but you have suspicions about the parent, but your child has never really had a friend before, so what do you put in your back pocket in order to allow this friendship to continue? And how much do you forgive, in spite of your feeling, to allow, to allow a small, almost a family unit of friendship to be um, without being a dummy? <laughs> sure, sure <laughs> you yeah. Know? And Damien, how about you? I, I, I see a marriage come in ah. very... <laughs> Soon. There will be a big party, I'm sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Um, keep oh, yeah. watching because uh, I'm and, sorry, uh, that's a spoiler right there. Isaiah. I'm so sorry. We'll be getting married. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, so such a beautiful uh, situation, you know, it gives so much flavor to the whole thing. Uh, it would be a little too close for comfort, maybe. But uh, this, this, I mean, this, this, these neighbors are ideal. You know, they're so loving and uh, beautiful and talented that uh, you will see. There are a couple of parties coming up. <laughs> and uh, maybe even a wedding. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Definitely so. a potluck. A potluck, I mean, nice. Who yeah. doesn't invite the chef over, regardless of your misgivings? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You got to invite the chef over for dinner, and you got to make him cook, right? Okay. Uh, so thanks so much for taking the time, everybody. Everyone be, sure to, everyone be sure to tune in to Let the Right One In on Showtime.